boaters, boaters. This is Pauly from All Docked Up. The season is opening, and tonight we got Captain Buzzword. <laughs> hey, what's going on, Pauly? Captain Buzz here from All Docked Up. We've got a we've got a nice podcast coming to you. We got I'm a, excited. Yeah, we got. A, I'm we got excited. I'm hyped. I'm I'm hyped tonight. Well, and the last time we had lasagna, now we had pot pies. Dude, I'm always down for a pot pie after the day I had. As long as I didn't have to cook, I didn't so, care. And so we need to get into the day you had. I think that's important, and folks will learn from that. But I, I have an idea for for future podcasts because you and I are both chefs. Pauly grew up in the pizza and restaurant business. His entire family has restaurants, and I graduated culinary school and was executive chef. And so I think we can share boating culinary secrets in another podcast what do you I'm, think i'm down for whatever right? I, I grew up on the line my father was uh, a transplant from italy came to this country in 1969 opened up his uh, first restaurant in 1971 in queens nice. new york and uh he never stopped he has built uh if the number's accurate i know he's over 20 locations that pop has built you know from yeah. scratch you know uh so when it comes to culinary Everybody loves the way Polly cooks, that's for sure. Well, and 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 I've been in the culinary business for my entire adult life and and now with all docked up, but uh, you know, I've I've made a lot of red sauces in my life, but Polly taught me how to how to make a sauce and and I I can still make it that way to this day. So I'll you shared a that. secret on like on our podcast. If my father hears this, I'm dead. Oh, I can't. I can't do that. Oh, I'm telling you what. If Ooh. Pop finds out I shared the sauce recipe with you, I'm in deep doo doo. All right, I'm, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'll protect you, folks. And, uh, everybody listening, don't tell my father. <laughs> Sorry, you, I won't be able to tell you how to make family that sauce. sauce recipe. That's made a lot of money over the years. Well, then I'm that much more honored that you shared that recipe with me. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, so Buzzy, what are we talking about? We got to talk about. We got to tell everybody what we're talking about. Well, first is our. Uh, I've got my captain's briefing, and then you've got your detailers' briefing. Absolutely, captain's briefing, guys. Every week we're going to do a captain's briefing, a small, you know, uh, one of the topics of boating, <laughs> and and something that's helpful to you that you may or may not have thought of. Buzzy, take it away. All right, this is very simple. It's put the plug in, <laughs> and. And it may sound simple, and it is, but I'll tell you a story. And I've been through a bunch of boats, right? And and my very first boat, it was a uh, 17-foot aluminum bass tracker. An ass slapper. <laughs> well, <laughs> you got to admit, right? That's on a run. It better be a calm day or that's that's not going to be good. It didn't go very fast. It had 25, 20, <laughs> 25 horse. I had a console. And it also had, it was really cool. It had a wireless foot pedal for my trolling motor. So I could sit anywhere on the boat and run the trolling motor. It was very cool. Dude, that's, great. that's it was, incredible. It was a great boat. So anyway. Cool I, piece of technology for back in the day, right? Yeah, it was that's, awesome. That's great. I think they still make them. But I, I did a couple of shakedown runs, and I said, I said to my wife, I said, come on, let's go out on the boat. So... And and folks that know this, it's the, the it's Lake Conowingo in uh, in Maryland, uh, and it's a dammed up section of the Susquehanna River, and it's called Broad Creek, and it's a it's a very steep approach to the ramp, and and so brand new boat, not brand new, but new to boating and new to back new to the trailer, you. not brand right? new, new coming to down you. this this you know it was a very narrow approach into the into the into the ramp, but whatever. So I got it in and brought the boat around and parked the truck. Wife and I got in and we started, we got a you know a few feet away from the dock. And Paulie, up from the floor, the it was coming up like a fountain. Because, you know, it had a bilge and then a carpeted floor, and there was a there was a drain. Sure. And the floor and the water was coming up through the drain. That's not good. It wasn't good. No. How'd you so feel I, about that? I pretty bad. So I had to come back, tie the boat up. How'd your wife feel about that? She was that's the most important thing, right? <laughs> a little freaked out. Got had had to go back and get the truck, put the trailer back in, and put the boat back on the trailer to get the water out. I could, the bilge pumps couldn't keep up. Oh, you didn't have uh, <laughs> the old three thousand gallons per hour. <laughs> no. Oh my God. So that you know was a great experience, and you'd think I'd learn from that point to put the plug in. What are you telling me? You did it again? I did. Get the hell out of here! <laughs> so <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. I towed the boat up to Maine. Uh, on a vacation, beautiful up Moosehead Lake, Maine, 
and my buddy and I, we went to a smaller impoundment and put the boat in. Now there wasn't even a ramp. It was a beach. So I'm backing the truck up in the trailer. I'm a, down for the old beach on scene. On a beach, That's right? beautiful. And putting the boat in. And we put the boat in and, and everything's cool and park the truck and we hop in and we start rolling down the lake. <laughs> and the same, no thing, the same thing happened. Water started coming up through the no, no, Hold on a minute. Let, let's back up here because I, I know the people listening to this want to know this. <laughs> so what was the temperature of the water? I mean, that could, that, that could have been good. Well, these lakes are 100 feet deep and the water's cold all year long. Oh. So not only you, you're taking on water, <laughs> you never put the drain plug in the actual <laughs> boat, okay? And uh, the water is freezing. Yeah. Ah, so you're having a good day. So so now we're both in the boat. It's not like I can tie up to a dock. I got our, I said, I said, I said to my buddy, I said, you know, we got to go back. Obviously, we got to go back. Yeah. I had to run the boat right up on the beach. I mean, you know, till her up the motor and take her right up on the beach. Yeah, because if not, you would have been, you know, the, she would have went under. Correct. You know, and you would have been freezing to death. Well, hypothermia is going to set in. What? What is that? With that water temperature, what do you have? Three and a half, four minutes, maybe? Gets a good question, and we got to find out that yeah, actual I, I don't exact know how, temperature. I don't know how, what exactly the temperature was, but it, the water was cold. We would not have been. Happy. <laughs> no, I wouldn't think so. So it ran a boat up on the beach and and sort uh, high enough on the beach, and you know it's it's draining out. And then you reach down and put the plug in and let the pumps take over. We had a great day of fishing. Man, it was smallmouth bass up there. We killed them. It was a great day. Oh, I'm sure it was beautiful. However, the, the bottom line. Don't forget the Don't forget the boat the train plug in. <laughs> I got a small little story. When I first started boating, okay, in 2005 at the Chamonix State Marina, when I am telling you we had a public ramp, if you were having a bad day, and, and anybody listening to the podcast in Philadelphia. This is on the Delaware River. This is on the Delaware River. If you're having a bad day, bag of popcorn, lawn chair, yeah. and go watch people put boats on their trailers at the Chamonix State Marina. Dude, I'm telling you what, it was the funniest thing that I have ever seen in my entire life. The fights between, you know, the wife who's trying to back the trailer down the ramp without jackknifing her, the husband screaming at her. And I'm like, guys, we're, we're not doing any, you know, we're not, we're not accomplishing anything here. One's ready to kill another. And I know how many people right now who are listening are going, oh my oh, God. Yeah. I've been there, done that. I've been there, I've done it. And that's why the boat's in either a slip or, or it's, they it's on a lift. Oh, it's hopefully on a lift. they didn't do that. Yeah, hopefully they didn't do that. <laughs> uh, but I'm telling you, it was the best times I've ever seen. The fu- it was the funniest thing. So anybody who's in Philadelphia, go to the Chamonix State Marina and 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 watch the... It's comedy. It's, it's comedy. It's pure comedy. It, 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 it's, it's, it's very stressful. And that, another topic for a podcast down the road is is, is launching a boat. So, Paulie, w- give us a, give us your detailer's briefing, right? Well, I went through my captain's briefing and and, and showed every, and you, and everybody you, yeah, that. Paulie, you got no love on this captain's briefing. Well, I'll tell you what, <laughs> you know, the season is here, everybody. Paulie is, uh, you know, a master detailer, and uh, I've been working on boats for a long time. The, the amount of time that I've got on these arms with the wheel is incredible, yeah. and it's funny because I've made so many mistakes, and I still make them to this day. Because every boat is different. Every gel coat is different. Yeah. Every boat that we polish, captain's briefing. Guys, I, I took a shrink wrap cover off of a boat today that the only thing I can say is this. Put your vessels away clean. Was she ridden hard and put away wet? She was ridden hard and put <laughs> away wet. I, I, I'm going ahead and, and I'm, I'm peeling the shrink wrap and I'm over at Bohemian Bay Yacht Harbor. And I'll tell you what. Great guys over there. I love great marina. I love doing uh love doing work there. Plus, I was on blacktop. They had an addition oh, yeah, and they blacktop the marina. That's pretty special. But, oh, it's oh my god, you kidding me? The ladders are not sitting on stone, you're not, you know, all over the place. And I cut the shrink wrap off this thing <laughs> and I looked and I was like, Oh my god. And I'll tell you what, it looks like they had a really, really good year. They had a lot of fun, and I'm telling you guys, put the boats away clean. I don't care what marina you're at. When you're at the end of the season and they're pulling you out and they're pressure washing your bottom, getting ready for winterization, take the time to scrub the boat. I mean, put her away the right way. The mold that I saw all over the place. It's got to help with mold, yeah. Guys, if you put your boats away clean, 
If, and, and I'll tell you what, by the way, everybody, there is nobody more anal than Captain Buzz <laughs> over here that puts a boat away the right way. Every cabinet door is open. Every drawer is open. Multiple damp rids, whether you want to yeah. use the buckets or you want to use... Hangers. I like the hangers, personally. The ones that are scented, I, I you know, I, I think that they're great. And that's my choice. I, I love them. You know, you open every cabinet, every drawer, every Dude, cubby, every floor, every everything. floor, any type of material that's on board that's going to suck up moisture, retain stench off. is off. Yeah. I, the way you put a boat away <laughs> is, you know, amazing. And I'll tell you what, guys, we got to do it. Put your boats away clean. Get them all cleaned up. The guys at the yard, every marina, you know, over here, uh, you know, they're they're blasting off the bottoms. They stink to high heavens when they're done. <laughs> They're putting in a lot of elbow grease, getting the growth off the bottom of your mm -hmm. boat. Take it once they put you on blocks, they get you all set to go. Wash the boat, put yeah, her it's away. A, it's a great call because that call. boat. I'm telling you what, they're wonderful and, customers. They're it, awesome people, but it, it, it's it, it, they're you know time right. So what, what does it come down to? Right. It comes down to you're busy. The kids are here. Everyone's going back to school. You know, we're getting control over the pandemic. Life's getting somewhat back to normal. I get it. And it's not its not so much getting the boat pristine necessarily because when a boat is in shrink, and I'm a gravel, you're, you've got pavement for the customers that you're dealing with, right? You know that the shrink wrappers that are taking care of the boat and putting it away, they're going to be tracking in dirt on your cockpit and on your bow. That's okay. You can't yeah, that's going to happen. That. You can't avoid that. The guys that are working still, in the yard, they, they still got to get, get the around. Boat ready to put away. You yeah. can't just, I'm done and walk away and leave all your life jackets in the compartments and your floaties and your the stuff collects a lot of moisture. Well, I'll tell you what, here's the magic. Every time that I start a detail in the beginning of this season, when I peel shrink wrap off a customer's boat, whether I take it off of my boat, yeah. you know, I grab a gallon of roll off. I absolutely love. Stay, and people look, you know, when I start a boat for the season, and I'm going to do a detail. I just gave you the roll-off lesson. What? You did, and I'll tell that in a moment. Two Go weeks ahead. ago. Yeah. I know that you, because the result that you got, you came up, they were like, Paulie, you can't believe this. And you were all pissed off because I never told you. What I, yeah, what do you I still don't for? understand. Like, you see me work with roll-off all the time. When I start a customer's boat, my boat, strip the entire boat, scrub that thing from top to bottom and make sure that the surface that I'm working with is prepped and ready to go. Well, here's the thing. I was afraid of it. Cause Why? I heard, What's there to be afraid about? Well, I'll tell you. So I had heard that, oh, yeah, you use roll-off, and it strips everything off, and it's too strong. And and like, and like and you told me. But like, you can control the concentrate. I mean, well, and you I can didn't, make it I didn't, as strong and as weak as possible, follow the directions on the bottom. I, and I do follow directions. You you know me, right? I follow directions. <laughs> and I read the directions after you told me, you know, I scrubbed that boat with roll-off. And I was like, oh, I don't know. They're going to strip everything off. Well, then you made a great point. He's like, well, wait a minute. You're going to polish and wax anyway. Get the get the gel coat ready with a with with a super cleaner. Well, sure, because here's the thing, it guys. Perfect sense to me. Well, fiberglass is exceptionally porous, no matter how you slice and dice it. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes when it rains, you get black streak marks that you physically cannot get off with some detergents, mm -hmm. and then you go get a black streak remover. And I'll tell you what, that's some nasty stuff. The wax is gone. A lot of these chemicals that people are using every day on their boats. They're having trouble getting it off. And the yeah. reason why yeah. is that the fiberglass has not been treated enough yet. It's dry. Listen, when you start the season and I strip everything off, I the boat is spotless clean. Then we're going to start compounding the boat out. The cleaner the surface, the better the prep, the better the job. Right. Every single solitary time. What would you tell me? You, the boat you were talking about today, you said it took three seasons to get it where it needs to be. I will tell you what. That trawler that I was working on today, the owners are awesome people. Very sweet, awesome people. I love having them as customers. And, and, and what I love about him the most is he brought a boat to me that was extremely oxidized. Yeah. We're talking. Oh, he let it go. He, it, it got let go. He's a busy guy. He's, he's working hard. He's taking care of his business. He's serving, he, you know, he's a busy guy. And uh, the boat, I looked at it, and I never actually worked on this manufacturer. The trawler that I was working on, I've never worked on before. That so was he, the first time with that model. You didn't know the quality of the of the gel coat and the, fi the fiber. No, glass. because, the, and here's yeah. the greatest thing. You know, there are people out there 
that say, well, this product will work on absolutely everything. And it will not. Yeah. I don't care what you tell me. Like, do you know, as a detailer, do you know how many bottles of chemicals that I have purchased <laughs> that someone said, hey, Paulie, try this because you might have a better result. I go out and I try it. I use it on a two by two, whether it's on the hall or the top side transit, whatever hits, you know, the strongest sun. Sure. And I'm putting it to work. If it's great product, I'll be able to cut through this. You know what I mean? Right off the bat. I guarantee you that I've thrown away 20 plus thousand dollars in chemicals without breaking a sweat. Because it didn't deliver. It was junk. It was, you know, and, and I'll tell you what, I'm a 3M guy across the board. It's, it's, it's what I love. It's what I use. The three-step system. It's the greatest thing in the world. And sometimes you got to use something even more abrasive. But if the surface is clean and you're starting off fresh, you want to build that back up. Don't be scared to do extra steps. And, and, and you're right. Don't be scared. And I was just, I, I had always been a roll on. I was very strong. I don't want to use it. But I read the directions. And you, on your recommendation, and it worked great. I'll tell you what. I changed the the ratio, you know, uh, you know, between chemical and water all the time. Because every application, every boat that I do that's different, depending on how dirty it is, is what it's going to call for. The boat that I worked on today, it was dirty. She was put away dirty, but the bottom line is I put that effort in. It took me three seasons yeah. to get that fiberglass to really look good. People think that you hire a detailer and they're going to create, you know, magic. they're going to create magic. And I'll tell you what, we do it all the time. The people that are waxing people's boats, I don't care where you are, Florida, the Carolinas, up and down the Chesapeake, Annapolis, I don't care where you are. A detailer gets put a boat in front of them. That has been murdered by the sun for <laughs> years, you know, just just Chalk. chalky and, and and just hard to manipulate. And they look at you and say, make her pretty again. And every I'll tell you what, any of the good detailers out there, what we go through, there are boats that we do that we'll spend days on and mm -hmm. we deliver it to the customer and we say, we did the best that we physically could. But we have to keep on going because fiberglass takes time to bring back. It's sure. not instantaneous yeah. unless you are willing to do three steps and above. You're going to do a compound. You're going to do a polish. If you have swirls built up in the fiberglass, yeah. you're going to use an anti-swirl. You know, you got to get those swirls out because it shows in the sun brutally. Sure. So you're going to use an ultra fine. And then you got to put a coat of insulator wax over the top, whether you're a carnubo based person I'm a polymer-based polymer person. Guy, I right. love polymers. I get longevity more out of polymers versus a carbonubo as a plant. And, uh, you know, if you're willing to let me do six steps and spend seven full days, you know, starting on your boat from, you know, the aft side of the, you know, right off of the transom and working your way around six times. So it's, but, but, and I think, I think the lesson here is that don't let your boat go. And if you buy a boat that, that is chalked, let a professional detailer come around, give you an estimate, and do the work. It may take a couple of seasons to get it back to where it was. Better than that, keep your boats maintained. Uh, you know, I tell my customers this all the time. You pay either way. Yeah, right. Good point. And, 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 and it's, it's like the greatest line, but it's the most honest thing in the world. If your boat is professionally maintained and it's being washed detailed, I do a lot of customers once a week, some twice, you know, two times a month. Oh, the weekly wash. They do bi-weeklies. Sure. They do weeklies. Right. Or even if the boater's keeping it up, wash your boat once a week. Use a very nice, expensive, heavy wax-filled soap. Don't buy junk that's going to... Because a lot of detergents will strip the wax off that you just pay the detailer. But, but but be careful in your choices because it needs to be environmentally friendly. Well, everything that you use on the water, guys, we got to be biodegradable because we got to keep the, our waterways, you know, safe and clean. Great. Our great, kids are yes. swimming in this. It's it's very important. Yeah. But I will tell you what, it's um, every boat's different. I don't care if I'm working with a sea ray or I'm working with an ocean yacht or I'm working on a Hatteras or a Maxim. I don't care if I'm working on a rinker. I mean, every fiberglass <laughs> responds differently. Yeah. And that's what makes a good detailer. Because if you think that, you know, you have a couple simple products that always are going to work, it does not. You've got a whole menu of chemicals to oh, use. Dude, I'll tell you what. Do you know how long it took me to master a wheel? 
how long that is an art that is not just a skill set that people pick up easily because oh, I, I taught you i know <laughs> believe me and you're buffing out a 420 c ray <laughs> with a blue hull <laughs> and it hurts a you lot. know <laughs> yeah you you share my pain so everybody doing out, a two-step i'm i'm whooping yeah that. boaters out there be thankful there are some detailers that go the extra mile um it, it, it's tough what we go through to make a customer's boat go yeah that's my shiny girl. But what the effort that we put in is incredible, and there's nothing more satisfying. It's a great satisfaction. You're oh, saying. when you're done, yeah. your back is killing you. There are days that my fingertips are numb. <laughs> you know what I mean? From the vibration of the buffer. But when you're all said and done, and you're looking at somebody's boat, and you do a before and after, that's what pays the day all day long. Well, and I can appreciate, because because I, I, I do polish my own hull, because Paulie has taught me how to do it. I'm still a novice. I do the best that I can, but I really appreciate that you have a cordless polisher, a buffer, because that cord is a, it's tough. The cord is the hardest thing. I invested, I, you, yeah. I invested That's in a, a Milwaukee cordless buffer. Really cool. But I'll say this much, as much as I love that cordless buffer, yeah, it takes me, if I'm going into a job that I'm going to be doing heavy compounding. I got to break out the wall oh. because it, you you will you would need multiples, and I work with two oh. batteries and, and and a multi you know charger that sure. will do like four different batteries at a time. But to be honest with you, when I'm really working fiberglass, I need old yellow. I need my the wall <laughs> baby twelve inch pad. With the soft start and but what I recommend soft, is oh, well, soft start's those. beautiful option. Yeah. But you're you 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 need direct power and that and I'm telling you what the end of that head. When it's the summertime and you're polishing a boat, my left hand is smoked and burnt <laughs> because that motor gets hot. Sure. When you're wheeling out a boat, and I'll tell you what, you're cutting everything out, you're breaking the surface down, uh, that thing gets hot. So polishing and waxing, I can use the, the you know the cordless, but a, a, a boat that really okay. needs work, yeah, nah, we're at the wall it up. Wow. So. We've done a captain's briefing and a detailer's briefing, and it's taken, uh, I don't know, 20 minutes. Nice work. That's but, a, but there's a lot of great information, and we're just going to keep on doing this. Because there's, there's, the so, much to, there's, so, much there's so much to share. There's so much to share. We have so many new boaters that are hitting the water in 21. It started in the beginning of the pandemic. You know, what were families going to do? There's so many people that need help out there, and I want to do everything under the sun working together with Captain Buzz and delivering that information for these people. Roger that. And so let's do one more thing before we before we close. Let's let's talk about zincs. Okay. So right we all know that 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 there's there's, there's sacrificial uh anodes on a boat uh because you've got galvanic galvanic uh corrosion. And what that means is you've got Maybe you've got a brass prop on a stainless shaft, and one is a noble metal, and one is or one is least less noble, and one is more noble. What that means is when the two of those metals are together, there's a chemical reaction. There's that a takes chemical place. reaction because they're electrolysis that every boater hates with at you know at you know from yeah. the bottom of their guts. Yeah, and it's it, it could be called electrolysis. It's really not the right term. It's 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 called galvanic. Uh, corrosion, and it, you again. You've got two dissimilar metals in the in the water connected by a conductor, which is the water, mm -hmm. right? So you need you need a a sacrificial anode, and for uh, for fresh water, you have to use the magnesium, right? There's there's three metals that 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 you can that that zincs are made of. One is magnesium, and that's for fresh water. Okay, for salt water. It's either zinc or aluminum, okay? And then for brackish water, it's aluminum. Right. We're boating on the Chesapeake Bay. You're in Chesapeake City. What do you put on your boat? Aluminum. Okay. It's got to be aluminum. So, And I, how have you made out so far with that application? Oh, they're, they're, they're chewed up by the end of the season. They're doing their job. But the taking props the and the shafts and the other pieces of metal under the water are We're looking good. Because the... the, the uh, the sacrificial anodes are taking taking the heat, right? It, the it's, a, it's a less noble metal, and that's the one that gets chewed on. Right. You you right. You want you want that process to happen to a Correct. sacrificial, you know, anode that, yeah, that right. takes the beating. 
I have a Bravo three on my boat. Got a lot of stainless. I got a. I got two against stainless steel aluminum. props against an aluminum outdrive. And I'll tell you what, yeah. since two thousand and five, I bought the, the you know the boat that came with. By the way, that boat was purchased brand new. Okay. So I had a brand new outdrive. I went through that one, replaced it with another Bravo three, and I, I did a complete upper and lower. I remember. You remember? Yeah. We pulled it out of the box, and then Honest John, you know what did he say to me, Paulie? It's only six bolts. <laughs> He used the F word in the process, but he's like, Paulie, it's only six volts, you know? And that was everything. Paul, John, can you help me take my outdrive off? Yeah, it's only six volts, Paulie. You should be able to figure this out, you know? But when it comes to mechanical, I'll tell you what, I dip my toes lightly. Um, oh, my God. My drive's been chewed apart. I mean, it, you know, the, I love the way that the drive performs. But a Bravo 3 with that combination together, oh, what a problem. And, and you can you can fit your boat with... Other, it sends a it sends a, a current into the water that counteracts. Oh well, Merc Cruiser has a system that they devise, correct? Right, that that's going to counteract that. It's actually got a brain in it. And it's, it's right, it's monitoring connected the to electric your battery. Exactly. It's hot, it's hot to the battery in it, and it sends it to to counteract. That's exactly right. But you know, when you're putting on, uh, it's important. Like if you've got if you've got zincs on your trim tabs, for example, and you're also bottom painting those trim tabs. You want to make sure that the that the anode is touching metal. Don't right, paint, people don't realize don't that. paint and then put the anode on because right. that that doesn't. You're have, defeating the entire purpose. That's exactly right. right. That that sacrificial anode has to be literally making contact with the material. That's that, correct. And not paint. That's it, it's got to be touching metal. And another thing I learned tip, uh, and I learned unfortunately the hard way. Yeah. <laughs> uh, putting. Um, because I have straight, I have a V drive, so I have shafts out to the out to the prop, not not uh, not IOs, and there are zincs on the shaft. And they have little washers and everything, and then the little Allen screws, and I got them all nice and tight. Yeah, they're always such a pleasure to put on at times. Let me tell you. Yeah, <laughs> no problem. I had it. But then then I put the boat in the water, and I'm and I'm running down the running down the bay, and I hear ping ting, and I. So centrifugal force came off the shaft, hit the prop. What the hell? And what did I tell you? I said, and I'll tell you what, yeah. Dan, Dan taught me that you're putting on a sacrificial <laughs> anode on, uh, you know, on, on a shaft. shaft, make sure that you are using a mallet. You're setting, you know, you tighten her down, you yeah. whack it, you tighten it down, you whack it. And, and <laughs> well, Dan and John, you know, they taught me that. Yeah, because I didn't know that until they said something. Well, so. I didn't know it until mine fell off. <laughs> right down the bed. Dan actually said something that that you know. Well, where's Buzzy's uh, anodes? And I was like, I I don't know. I yeah, guess well, they fell off. So yeah, if you're putting on uh, shaft sinks um, yourself or even a professional, you got to tap them a little bit and then tighten them down and tap them and tighten them. Give down them a little love. Give, give them a little, little extra attention because you want to make sure that they stay down on some more. Uh, yeah, because that 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 hurt. There's also we have license plates on the back. Uh, my boat has a has what we'll, it's 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 called a license plate. It's just a you know it's a monster. It's it's probably eight inches by four inches, and it's and it goes on the back of the transom. Yeah, that's a big girl. That's a big <laughs> right. And then I've she's got, heavy. Then I have I happen to have diesels and and uh, the engine. What uh, kind of diesel engines, Buzzy? Are you running in your boat? I have Cummins. Uh, Love for, it. 417 horse uh, uh, CTA 8.3 liter. Great, CTA great. CTA 8.3. You love them. Great motor. I do. They, they are really great. But each each motor has three pencil zincs. And so they're, I don't know, they're maybe three inches wide. It's a big five eighths um, nut uh, in the after coolers. And so you've got to, you got to, you, you got to change those. Because uh, I didn't know that at first. Again, I learned a lot. How did you learn that you weren't actually? Not only did you have you know zincs on your shafts coming out of the bottom of the of the bottom of the boat, right. you know that you actually had you know replaceable uh, you know on your engine. Well, because I spent that winter and I read the directions. My man, you always <laughs> do. I'll tell you what, everybody. I Buzz read. is the guy in the world. He can follow a set of directions. I don't. If it's in Chinese for some reason, I read he the figures out how to do it. Uh, no, I, I don't and know I went, how you oh, do it. I said, oh, wow. And then when I, boy, the first time I took them out, it was just the nut. The whole thing was already, the whole. Yeah, it was gone. It was gone. It was completely was gone. Like, that's, you know. It's not good for your motor. Dissolved. No, it's not. Because there's other metal in there and it's attached to the water. You got water flowing through it, bay water in this case, or salt water. The boat happened to come from salt water. 
And so anyway, so every year I replace the pencil zinc. So look at your, your manual or, you know, if you want to go through all docked up and get a quality service uh, provider and make sure that they're doing that for you. Absolutely. Get and, you it know, done. I, every I say, season. I love it that we have the entire summer that we're going to be promoting the company. We're going to be showing boaters what we're able to do. We're going to yeah. be connecting. Oh, you know what yeah. I'm excited about? I'm so excited about working with see the marinas. And, and as much as we mm-hmm. talk about boaters and we want to make sure that we connect the boater with a service provider, get them exactly what they need. Yes. But here's the thing. Yes. The marinas are who make make all this happen. The people who are washing your boat, waxing your boat, the people who are bottom owner pain, operators, yeah. bottom Lunching, painting, yeah. everything under the sun. These marina operators, the people that are working in the yards right now, make no mistake about it. The blood, sweat, and tears Good that they're people. putting in. Good people. Because and, and listen, guys, I'll tell you what. And all docked up. My goal is to work with. Me and Jeffrey, I'll tell you what, our goal since day one, you know, the two founders of the company, we wanted to not only help the boater, right. but we want to work with the Marine service provider and say, guys, tell me what we can do to make your life easier. They break their ass. Yeah, they do. You know what I mean? And nobody understands the boating industry until I worked a couple of winners, okay, at mm-hmm. Long Point Marina. And those guys showed me what slinging stands, throwing cinder blocks crawling on your knees <laughs> in stone dude i'll tell you what i barely could get through it and i'll be the first one to admit it i mean the beatings that the marinas take and and i'll tell you what guys thank the guys who are working in the yard yeah, the yard hands the guys running the travel lift everything under the sun give them love because i will tell you what it is it, it brutally beats you up the guys who are the mechanics that are getting your boat you know, commissioned they and do. ready they, for this season. They work very hard. Throw the love to the guys who do it because they kill themselves. Let, let, let's close with this, Paulie, because, you know, you know, every man or woman ha- has an ego and you and I are no exception. But if we're ever presenting something that you might not agree with or you think that it, it, it might be wrong or we could do it better, let us know. Because Paulie and I want to be able to provide this type of information to boaters to new boaters, to veteran boaters. We're on a fact-finding mission, Buzz. Right. We are going to take, with all the years that me and you have been boating, yeah. what I've learned. But, but, but I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt. There's so much more to learn. And we've got... Oh, a, my a, goodness. Right? There is so... With all the new technology the people that's that are listening in, have a lot of information. Send it. To, let us... And we'll share. That's absolutely. My point. That's my point. I, oh, I'm sorry. You know what? So yeah. We're offering it to the boaters out there that they have crap, you know, questions that they want to be able to send in. Exactly. And I'll tell you what, I want, like you said, we're on a fact-finding mission. And we're not, as I said, we have egos, but we're not, we're not uh, opposed to being corrected if we present something that, that could be done better, right? I'm always down to learn something new. Um, There's always a new technique that's coming out, you know, with all the new technology in boats, the mechanics, the new tools they got to buy. The new, you know, what it's they have to endless, go through to it's learn. An endless learning curve. Right. All we're going to do is find the best information under the sun delivered to our boaters. Roger bottom that. line. Okay. Bottom line. Well, this this has been a, this has been a, a lot of fun for us. Uh, and and the pot pie. The pot pie was really having, good. We're always having a little pot pie, doing a <laughs> podcast. You know, talking to our fellow boaters and and our marine suppliers, vendors. You know, one man guys out in their trucks working hard. Roger uh, that. I, I love it. I love it. Well, I'll tell All you right. what. We'll see you next time. Holy signing off on 6A, baby. Captain Buzz signing off. <laughs>